Mm -hmm. Hey, the back, my back thing's not on. Put on redeemed, buddy. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of Him all the day long. Oh, I sing, for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever I am. Give the Lord praise. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Shackled by a head burden, meet the load of guilt and shame within the hand of Jesus touched to me. Touch me, oh, 
Amen. Isn't that good? Michael, be sure to pass these out when I tell you to, not until I tell you to. Good to see everybody. How's everybody? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Bill. One of the old favorites. He touched me. Lord bless you, brother. Love you. Good to see everybody here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to James chapter 5. We continue our study on God's Olympics. Praise the Lord. This is our third and in a series of five, so uh, it's good to see everybody here. Hey, man, good to see you. Welcome those who are watching tonight online. Grateful you've uh, watching us wherever you may be. God bless you. Does anybody need an outline? Everybody got an outline? Anybody? George, good to have you guys back from Wyoming. How was everything there? Good, cool, nice, cool. Yeah, Buffalo still roaming. Yeah, good. Praise the Lord. Anyway, good. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You know, we got a lot of our people traveling on vacation and just uh, keep all everybody in their prayers. And I'm going to be leaving uh, to Friday, Brother uh, Rob. I, uh, Normie's daddy passed away, and um, I won't be back Sunday. So uh, the funeral's not till late Saturday, and that's an eight hour drive. And I'm preaching Sunday night at Victory Church in Scurry, but. Uh, they couldn't get the services any earlier at the church, so um, it's just, anyway, that's the way it is. So praise the Lord. Brother Rob is going to be preaching for us Sunday morning. Brother Michael is going to be preaching for us Sunday night. But remember Normie's family, there are a lot of lost people in her family that need Jesus. And so uh, I've known that family for nearly nearly 40 years, knew her mother and dad. And so praise the Lord, we'll be uh, leaving Friday to drive up to uh, Batesville, near Batesville, Arkansas, on the other side of Little Rock. So just pray for people to come to know Jesus. So uh, that's happening. The following Saturday, we'll be in Greenville, Texas, do a funeral for Brother David's family. His, uh, his uh, aunt passed away, and we're going to be doing his aunt's funeral the following Saturday in Greenville, isn't it, Brother David? So remember that family as well. Uh, we got a number of folks we want to remember tonight in our prayers. Jan Bodifer is doing great. Saw her yesterday, and she's looking good, hopefully going to get to come home this week. So that's a thank you, Jesus. Her therapy's going good, so keep her in your prayers. David Seaton, doing better, so keep uh, Brother David. Shorty Dillard, Rosemary Gaines, um, keep them in your prayers. Marsha Wallace, his sister, has been in the hospital, but we're grateful she's out. She lives in Mississippi, so keep her in your prayers. Greg and Leanne, we want to say hi to them. They're watching tonight. All their family has COVID, so uh, continue to remember Greg and Leanne in our, in our prayers and their family. Lisa Payne left today. Her mother is... Um, uh, going to have knee surgery, and so she left this afternoon to go to Oklahoma City. She's texted me. She made it there safe, so uh, I told her we'd remember her mother tonight in our prayer time. Uh, Brother George, you and Jan remember Joe Miller at Antioch Baptist Church. He's not, don't look like he's going to make it. He's, uh, I got a call from their family today, and uh, this is a family we've known for some time. I've done several meetings at Antioch Baptist Church in Antioch, Mississippi, near Philadelphia, uh, been to that church a number of times. George and uh, Jan's been there with us a number of times, as well as a bunch of other people. But uh, he's not doing good. Got COVID. He's on the ventilator. So keep uh, Joe Miller. I love that man. A precious, precious man, family. So his daughter, I told him we'd pray for them tonight. Uh, Carrie Williams. I checked on you know, Gary and Carrie would not hear this Sunday and uh, missed them. And so I checked on them this week. And Carrie's been having some heart issues. And so... Uh, they're trying to get her blood pressure down. Her blood pressure is over 200 and uh, looked like she might have had to have one of those uh, AFib type things. She's doing better, but she's uh, just keep uh, Gary and Carrie Williams in our prayers. Uh, you know, uh, Brian shared with me tonight that, you know, in all these years he's been in ministry, his dad's never called and asked prayer. But he's called this afternoon. He's in terrible pain there in Oklahoma. Brian's daddy, brother Ronnie, he's uh, hurt his back somehow and uh if you've ever had back problems, you know what he's going through. Amen. Um, I, they fused two of my discs in my back many, many years ago when I was just a young man. But I do know what back problems are when they fuse my spine as a 21-year-old boy. But just 
pray for Ronnie Gardner and, and Judy, um, uh, Brian's mom, and just keep them in your prayers uh, there. Remember Brother Ken Porter, too. Uh, he's still going to have another surgery on his, on his hand. He's got cancer on his, on his hand. So uh, keep them in your prayers. Anybody else know anyone we need to remember tonight? We got, yes, ma'am. What, what's she got, COVID or what? Okay. Bless her heart. Okay, where's she at? Uh, okay. Good, good. So remember Cindy's friend. Be sure, we got to make sure that Melissa knows that I'm not going to be here Sunday. Coleman was supposed to be baptized Sunday morning. Yeah, so, so you, you know, if they want to come, Brother brother. Uh, uh, Brother Rob be more than happy to baptize him, okay? But just look, they're coming. That's good. Well, we got baptism Sunday. Isn't that good? I said, I think that's a Jesus deal, isn't it? So uh, remember little Coleman and that family. Amen. Yeah, we're good. They're having a revival on that. Well, it'd be good to maybe have two, Brother Rob. That's good. That's, that's a Jesus deal, yeah. Amen. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. This is the day the Lord has made, whether it's Wednesday or Sunday. Every day is the Lord's day. And we're grateful for it. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer and standing in the gap for others. As we uh, lift him up tonight to Jesus, Lord, you've heard the request. Those are uh, the, the spoken requests, those unspoken requests. Lord, we just ask that Jesus would minister your, his mercy and grace in these families' lives. Lord, I just uh, ask that Dr. Jesus would touch those who have a physical ailments, those who, who need you mentally, emotionally, Lord, just to minister your grace in their lives as well. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answered prayers. Lord, we're grateful when we pray that you hear our prayers and you answer them according to your, your, your will and for your glory. And Heavenly Father, we just pray for our service tonight. Lord, I'm excited about uh, what you're about to speak in my heart, Heavenly Father. Give us ears to hear. Those that are at home, we pray that you'd bless them tonight who are watching, Lord, uh, online ministry. Thanks so much for our online ministry. Folks that have been saved through that ministry. And, Lord, people that cannot come out because of COVID and other illnesses, we're grateful for our online ministry. So, Lord, we just pray that you'd watch over us and guide us. We love you tonight, Lord. We need you. Just uh, speak to us and through us. And all God's people said. Let's stand in honor of God's Word together, church. James chapter 5, we're God's Olympics. Team Jesus, James chapter 5. These verses you've already got marked, dog-eared. They're very important verses. We looked at them many times before. We're going to start here tonight, but we're fixing to go to 1 Kings. Look at verse, uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. If you got it, say you got it. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, just like we did, just like you do. That we may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might, that it might not rain. And, he, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three and six months. And he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's all pray this prayer together tonight, church. Everyone praying with me from your heart and from your lip. Those at home, would you join with us, please? Dear Jesus, please speak to my heart tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, because of this woke business and all the other junk going on in America, uh, not many people are watching the uh, Olympics over in Tokyo, and I don't care. Uh, they're not going to... They're not going to stand up for the flag and be patriots. I could care less what's going on in Tokyo or Los Angeles or New York either. But uh, let me just tell you something, friends. You know, all spiritual champions, all spiritual champions, the ones we're studying on God's Olympics, Team Jesus, all spiritual champions in the Bible have one thing in common. One thing in common. They were all men and women of prayer. I don't care who we're talking about. We've already mentioned Paul. We've already talked about Job. I, all, I don't care who. Every man and woman that God used in a great and mighty way, not just used them in a little way, every man and woman God used in a great and mighty way in and out of the Bible have one thing in common. They were men and women of prayer. 
And uh, the one we're looking at tonight is perhaps one of the greatest prayer warriors of all the Bible. As a matter of fact, when James, the stepbrother of Jesus, decided, talks about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, he could have talked about Abraham. Abraham stood in, the, uh, stood in the gap for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you out there, please? He was a praying man. Man, how about, how about uh, David? He certainly was a praying man. Daniel, all, those, all the great men that we love in the Old Testament, he could have used any of those. But James chose Elijah, the prophet of God, as an example of, of a spiritual champion who ran on Team Jesus and did great exploits for the cause of Christ. Look at your outline. I thank God tonight that our Heavenly Father is still taking knee mail. Hello. He's still taking knee mail. He was answering prayers in the Old Testament, the New Testament. He's still answering prayers tonight. Say amen to that. We just prayed believing for those people. We believe God to answer according to His will. If you pray and believe, you'll receive. Pray and doubt, you'll do without. Uh, Jeremiah 33, God says, call unto me and I will answer you. God still takes knee mail. We're going to look at the four times. Look up here. There are four recorded prayers of Elijah. I'm sure he prayed more than that. But there's only four times we find Elijah's prayer in the Old Testament. I've never preached this message in my entire life. God's been speaking to my heart in this series on God's Olympics. I've never preached this message. If I ever go back on the road again doing putting the practice power prayer seminars, this will be one that we'll be using. I've ne- God gave it to me this week. You know what? I've never studied the four prayers of Elijah. But let me tell you, I hope you'll get a big blessing as I have. And you will if you want to. If you don't, that's your business. But let me just tell you, friends, every time Elijah prayed, something happened. And uh, we, his four prayers, there's only four recorded. He prayed more than four prayers. There's 17 prayers recorded of Jesus. I guarantee he prayed more than 17 times. But God's Holy Spirit in his wisdom recorded four prayers of Elijah. Who's this young man here? I haven't met him. Who's this kid? Okay, I want to meet him. Well, I don't know. Just what's your name, young man? Ian. Good to see you, young man. God bless you. Oh, good, 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 good to have you, young man. I just spotted you. I don't like your hair. It's too curly. But, uh, and when you get 72 years old, you'll understand that too, okay? But... Uh, Ian, we're glad to have you tonight. Look up here, guys. Uh, you know, when I see visitors, we need to welcome them. Amen. Good to have you, Ian. Uh, guys, but when we look at these four recorded prayers, when we pray, we can expect four things to happen. We're studying the, one of the greatest prayer warriors in all the Bible. You know what? If I'm going to learn how to pray, I want to study from the greatest men and women who know how to pray. I'm not going to pray, uh, learn from some Baptist who's on again, off again, and only prays 9 9-11 calls. Someone has a part-time prayer. I want to study the great warriors of prayer. And it doesn't get even greater than the prayer life of Elijah. Of all the people James could have chose as an example of a great prayer warrior, he chose one, and that was Elijah for a reason. Number one, write it down. When, when we pray, we, need, we can expect the Lord to resurrect the dead. When we pray, we can expect the Lord to resurrect the dead. Did you see spiritually there? Did you see the word spiritually out beside the word dead? Say, I talk to me, church. It's not hard now. We can, when we pray, we can expect the Lord to resurrect the dead. Everybody turn to 1 Kings chapter 17. Everybody home, please hurry. 1 Kings 17. When Elijah prayed, Four things happened. This is his first prayer recorded in the Bible. And when we pray, we can expect the Lord to resurrect the dead spiritually. When you got it, I'm going to wait till you stop turning your pages. I want everyone to get it. Then I want you to look up here. We'll take time. 1 Kings chapter 17. I've got plenty of time. I don't leave till Friday morning for Arkansas. 1 Kings chapter 17. Does everybody got it? Look at your neighbor, and if, he's, if they got it, say they got it. Phyllis, Brother Bill got it. Is he still looking for it? I'm asking you, Phyllis, does your ne- he still doesn't have it. Okay. Well, let's, 
She just threw you under the bus, and I thank God for that. Okay, look at 1 Kings chapter 17, guys. Look up here. Everybody's got it except Brother Bill. Early in Elijah's ministry. This is early in Elijah's ministry. Everybody look up here. God led Elijah to a place called Zarephath. There he performed a miracle for a widow woman and her little boy who were about to starve to death. There had been a famine for three and a half years. No, there's no food. There's been, there been a drought for three and a half years. Elijah went to Ahab and said, because of your heathen ways and apostasy, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. Hadn't rained in three and a half years. You can imagine people hurting, starving. And God led Elijah to a place called Zarephath, to a widow woman who had a young boy, and he performed a miracle and saved him from starving to death. Everybody look up here, guys. I don't know what you're looking down yet. Later on, that little boy got sick and died. Now let's pick up the story. Look at 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 21 and 22. If you got it, say you got it. Please underscore this word, please. And Elijah stretched himself upon the child. Do you all have that in your Bible? And Elijah stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, I pray. His first prayer recorded. I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came to him again, and he revived. Everybody look up here. That little boy that died is a picture of me and a picture of you before you got saved. You see, before you and I gave our heart and life to Jesus, we were all spiritually dead. That little boy's physical death is a picture of all of us spiritually before we met Jesus. Before I met Jesus, Ephesians 2 says that we were dead in trespasses and sins. Look at your outline. Fill in the blanks. Key thought. As God's people, we need to stretch ourselves in prayer for the lost. We need to stretch ourselves in prayer for the lost. That word stretching there, he literally stretched his body over that child three times. You guys look up here, praying for that boy. That word stretch means he was earnest. Are you out there? He was earnest for the life of this little boy. How much more earnest should we be for the souls of men and women and boys and girls going to hell? If Elijah could pray and God would give that boy physical resurrection, how much more will he hear us when we're praying for people's spiritual resurrection? I'm grateful I had a mother who stretched out over me all the days of my life. My mother stretched out for me all the days of my life when I rebelled from my parents, when I stole her car, when I was living like a heathen for a few years, not like some of you for a hundred. I ran away when I was 14, got saved when I was 19, so that's five years. That's five years too many. But those five years I was living in the world, my mother stretched herself every day for the soul of her boy. Do you know what? Someone stretched themselves for you. You know why we're not seeing more people saved? Do it because we do it flippantly. Lord, would you save the lost? Lord, would you save the lost? You know what? Elijah stretched himself. He earnestly, fervently, passionately prayed for that boy. And that's how we need to be praying for lost people. That's how I'm praying for your son right now, James. I pray for him every day. I stretch myself like this daddy. And Donnie. God, that's her boy. Let me tell you something, guys. You know what? We'll see people, more people saved when we start stretching ourselves in prayer. Some of you have had lost loved ones for years. When we pray, we can expect the Lord to resurrect people spiritually. We're still praying for Ennis. 
She wasn't here Sunday, but we're still praying for her. Just like your class, we stretch out for her every day. We want to see that woman from Iraq come to know Jesus. Guys, you can't just pray one time or two times and just stop. Guys, you've got to stretch yourself out daily. How many times did he stretch himself out? He, he stretched himself out once, said, well, it ain't going to work, and walks out. Are you out there, please? The Bible says he stretched himself three times. Next week, when we deal with the second part of this message on Elijah's prayer uh, out of James, because James tells us a lot about his prayer life, and James uh, will understand that we've got to pray not just for the passion, but we've got to pray with, well, I'm not going to get into next week's Next week. But look up here. When we pray, expect the Lord to resurrect the spiritual dead. Just like you tonight, before I got here this morning, my prayer time, I sat out there in that car watching people walk in. I'm not just out there jacking around, playing, watching my iPhone and playing some stupid game on my phone. I don't know how to do that anyway, ignorant. My kids always want me to play these games. I can't, first of all, I can't see the stinking thing. Do you know what? I sit out in that car praying for people when they walk in this building. Amen. You know what? We need we got to stretch ourselves out for lost people. I don't do it like I ought. But let me tell you, if we're going to be like Elijah, we're going to be a, on Jesus' team, a spiritual champion, we've got to learn how to pray like Elijah prayed. And he stretched himself out for the lost. He's, he only prayed four times. We learn the secret of how to pray. When we pray, number one, we can expect the Lord to resurrect the dead. Number two, when we pray, we can expect the Lord to revive the church. When we pray, we can expect the Lord to revive the church. The second prayer that Elijah prays in the scriptures is now in 1 Kings chapter 18. Everybody look up here, please. We're going to look at, everybody, please, everybody look up here. The second time Elijah prays, he's now on Mount Carmel. He's on the top of Mount Carmel. You know the story. Elijah, uh, Israel has left their first love. They're backslidden. They're spiritually dead, Mike Blackburn. Israel, Mike Blackburn, was spiritually dead. They were worshiping false gods. They were in great need of revival. They were worshiping Baal. They were cold. They were dead. They were indifferent to the things of God. Sound familiar, America? A lot of our churches are cold and dead. Like a lot of Christians I know. That are cold and dead spiritually. You're lukewarm, the Bible says. So the second time Elijah prays, he's on Mount Carmel. Look with me in 1 Kings chapter 18. Our only hope for survival, just like Israel, is revival. Our only hope for survival as a nation, just like Israel, is revival. Before we look at the scripture, would you write down the word revival? Yes, look at the last sentence on your page. Don't turn it over. It says revival means to make alive again. Revival means, do y'all see it? The last, y'all see the last? Say, say you see it. Revival means to make alive again. Now everybody look up here. If anybody needed to be made alive again, it was Israel. Are you out there, please? They were dead spiritually. They weren't worshiping Jehovah. Just like America. We're worshiping gods of pleasure, power. We're, we're worshiping false gods in this nation. If there's ever a need for revival in America, in our churches, in our lives, it's revival to make life again. So Elijah has the Mount Carmel Olympics, and he, changed, he challenges the 450 prophets of Baal to a showdown at sundown. And he says, let the God who answers by fire, let him be the God of Israel. Now notice his prayer. Look at first. Here's the second time he prays. First Kings chapter 18, verse 37 and 38. 37 and 38. Elijah says, hear me, O Lord, hear me. He's praying now, isn't he? 
that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. That's revival. When God turns our hearts back to him, that's revival. He said, please turn their hearts back to you. Look at verse 38. Then the power of the Lord fell. Look up here. That's all you need to see. When we pray, expect the Lord to send revival to his church. It's, look up here. He didn't get up and preach a three-point message on top of Mount Carmel and try to impress everybody with his Sunday school or his sermon that he's going to preach next Sunday at the tabernacle. Preaching is not going to call America back to Jesus. Are you out there, please? I don't care how great a teacher, how great a whatever we think we are, prayer is going to call America back to Jesus. That's our only key. But we pretend like we think it's going to be our preaching that's going to do it, our teaching is going to do it, our singing is going to do it, it's our building. Friends, it's prayer that's going to do it. Elijah teaches us that. When we pray, we can expect the Lord to revive the church. Look on the back of your outline. When our eyes, fill in the blanks, please. When our eyes are dry. Everybody say that back to me. When our faith is old. When our hearts are cold. And our prayers are cold. Lord, send revival. By the way, that's a Keith Green song. Every day in my prayer time, Michael, I pray that to my Heavenly Father. Because I'm not what I ought to be, okay? See, this is what God gave me, not to y'all. Some of you will forget it, throw it away. It's your business. But I want God to use me for his glory. The only way he can do that, friends, is for me to realize I need revival every day of my life. I'm not depending on Sunday morning and Sunday night's messages how God failed this last week. That ain't going to hack it. Every day, Heavenly Father, forgive me that my eyes are dry. My faith is old. My heart is hard, and my prayers are cold. Lord, send revival to me. The reason we don't have revival is because most people don't think they need it. Revival will never come. Revival will never come to a prayerless church, and revival will never come to a prayerless Christian because we are the church. See, the revival don't come, on, it starts with individuals. Elijah knew exactly what the doctor, what Israel needed and what Dr. Jesus ordered. And so he prayed. Not when he preached and the fire fell. Not when he taught and the fire fell. Not when he performed a great miracle and the fire fell. Not when he worshiped and praised, but when he prayed, the fire fell. There's only four prayers of Elijah in all the Bible. And every time we read about a prayer, it teaches us something about prayer. Number one, when we pray, expect the Lord to resurrect the dead. Number two, when we pray, expect the Lord to revive the church. Number three, when we pray, expect the Lord to require perseverance. The Lord requires perseverance. To pray and keep on praying 
and keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying. Are you all out there, please? Every time Elijah prayed, the Lord teaches us some great truths about prayer, Michael McNary. The third time Elijah prays in the scriptures, it teaches us that the Lord requires perseverance in our prayer life. We're still in 1 Kings chapter 18. And everybody look up here. Remember it's been three and a half years. Would you put that in your outline? Remember it's been three and a half years in Israel. And there's been no rain. There's been no rain because of the people's apostasy. Apostasy. They turned their back on God. Apostasy and Apathy. So God just turned the fountain off. He turned the water off. It's been three and a half years. I've seen some droughts as a young man growing up in West Texas that depended on rain. Our farmers depended on rain. We had those big old wells out there. But, but you know, a lot of our farmers across America, before we had wells, they depended on rain, just like Israel. Depended on the latter and the farmer rains. They didn't have irrigation like we do in modernization. So God just turned the spigot off. And it hadn't rained now for three and a half years. But it's interesting. Look up here. It's interesting after Israel confessed their sins and can finally confessed, the Lord, He is God. They're getting it right now. For all those years, Baal was their God. But now they've confessed, the Lord, He is God. You see, revival's coming. The people, are, their hearts are turning back to God now. Because that's what happens when revival comes. And they confess, the Lord, not Baal, the Lord, He is God. And as soon as the fire falls and Elijah hears the people getting right with God, Stays up on Mount Carmel and he begins to pray. Oh, I can't wait to share this in depth with you next Wednesday night because you'll get a big kick out of it. Because it's amazing. The Bible says, Elijah says, it's fi- tells Ahab's servant, go tell Ahab it's fixing to rain. And the Bible says that Ahab. After he slays 400 false prophets, the Bible says he went to eat and drink. The Bible says as soon as the fire fell, Elijah went to pray. See, sometimes praying comes before eating and drinking. When was the last time you and I missed a meal for prayer? When was the last time you and I missed a meal praying for America? When was the last time you missed a meal for a lost person? When was the last time you missed a meal for something? Ahab runs off and he eats and drinks. Nothing wrong with eating and drinking. But you know what, friends? There's a time for that, but the most important time is to pray. Here's the man of God. He gets on his face and starts praying. <laughs> and notice the third prayer recorded of Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42 and 43. 42 and 43. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servants, Go up now to look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud of the sea like a man's hand of the Lord. And he said, Go up and say again to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down for the rain, stop thee not. Everybody look up here now. (laughs) When you study this account in James 5, the Bible says, Elijah prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Then James says, and Elijah prayed again. He he, he told Ahab, it's not going to rain for three and a half years. Then James says, and Elijah prayed again, and God sent an abundance of rain. 
You need to write that in your outline. Are you still with me where we're at? Am I going too fast? Write down the number seven. Seven times Elijah prayed. He persevered, and God answered. It's like that little boy. How many times did he stretch himself out? He didn't just do it once, say, well, he didn't hear me. I'll go somewhere else. He didn't just pray once, say, well, it's not going to rain. He went eat and drink with Ahab. Are you out there, please? If we're going to be spiritual champions for Jesus, we've got to persevere in our prayer life. We've got to be steadfast. Just because God don't answer the first time, keep on praying. Fill in the blanks. God's delays are not necessarily God's denials. Same in that. God's delays are not necessarily God's denials. You men that I handed something, you ought to look in the outline because you're not following me. If I just handed you a deal that says pass out the papers, that's what you're supposed to be doing now, Lynn, instead of grinning like a possum. Will, Will, that's you too, son. Everybody gets one. Everybody gets one, please. He, this couple right here and these right here. We got some more right. Bill, y'all get no, no, no. Coming to you. Just sit there, please. Anybody else need one? Yes, sir. They're all the same. Whatever. Hey, guys, look up here. The thing I'm about to hand you out, I've, I did this when I first came here in September last year. We did a prayer seminar. The first thing I did when I got back to Cornerstone, we did a prayer seminar. And one of the, during that time in September, we passed this out once, but some of you didn't get, you weren't here. And I want, and if you got it again, I don't care. I got those, se- those seven things are in front of my Bible. They're right here. I tried to make them, let me see yours, please. I tried to make them look up here. Everybody look. I tried to make them small enough. Yours is smaller than mine. I tried to make them small enough so you can put them in your Bible somewhere. Mine's in the front of my Bible. Because let me tell you, friends, when you and I pray, look up here. We got to persevere in our prayer time. These seven things God has been teaching me through the years. It took years for God to teach me these seven things. I didn't learn this from somebody. I've learned it through the years. In prayer seminars, we pass this out all over the country. These are things, spending time with the Lord, He teaches us, and it's not overnight. But in my prayer time, I end my prayer time every day saying, Lord, would you remind me of these seven things? Would you look at them? Lord, please remind me that everything has its time and place. It's not your time or your place. It's God's time and His place. They may not get saved here. Maybe they get saved at home. Are you out there, please? George Mueller prayed 40 years for his brother. He didn't get saved until after he died, okay? Everything has its time and place. But you know what George Mueller did? He prayed 40 years for his brother. Everything has its time and place. Number two, Lord, teach me that instant answers do not mature us. If God answered our prayers instantly, we'd be a bunch of spoiled brats, which we already are. Instant answers does not mature anybody. Number three, Lord, teach me that faith is strengthened with use. It's strengthened with use as you pray over and over, pray in Heavenly Father, as you stretch yourself fervently, passionately for the lost, for loved ones, for the sick, for whatever. Faith is strengthened with use. Number four, Lord, teach me. Waiting is good training. God help us. Number five, look up here. I've had people say, Brother Jim, would you pray for me? I need patience. Let me tell you, you never pray for patience. That would be the worst prayer you've ever prayed in your life. And I learned that the hard way. So when we pray, Heavenly Father, teach me that patience is one of my greatest needs. Number six, Lord, teach me even when you're silent, 
you're still moving and working in my life. Guys, look up here. Moses was on the backside of a desert for 40 years, didn't hear nothing from God. He was on the backside of a desert 40 years, not to hear one stinking thing. Hadn't heard one thing in 40 years. But even though he hadn't heard nothing, doesn't mean that God wasn't moving and working. And sometimes we think, well, man, Lord, did you hear me? Man, my sister's getting worse off. I've been praying and she's getting worse. Well, guess what? If she's a Christian, she's getting better, goofus. Number seven, Lord, teach me I must have faith in you and not in my prayers. When we pray, expect the Lord to require perseverance. Keep on praying. He prayed seven times. He was one of the greatest prayer warriors ever lived. If he had to pray seven times, how many times am I going to have to pray? Please, everybody, look up here. This last one's going to blow you away. Look up here. I didn't ask you to look down, Lisa. Pet Coonan. We can expect the Lord when we pray. Look up here. We can expect the Lord to resurrect the dead spiritually. We can expect the Lord to revive the church. We can expect the Lord to require perseverance. But number four, we can expect the Lord to refuse some of our prayers. Write it in your outline. We can expect the Lord to refuse some of our requests. He's not going to answer all your prayers. Can I have an amen there, please? Look up here, please, church. The last time Elijah prayed, God didn't answer his prayer. He's the greatest prayer, one of the greatest. Look up here. We're now in 1 Kings 19. Look at this. Everybody look up here. The fire fell. 400 prophets were slain. Everybody look up here. The fire fell. 400 false prophets were slain. And Queen Jezebel, Michelle Obama, Kamala Harris, she's called Jezebel in the Old Testament. She said, I'm going to kill Elijah. He killed my prophets. They're killing my reporters from CNN. So Jezebel says, I want a bounty. I put a bounty on Elijah's head. Kill him. You'll be rich. Here's the man of God. Just prayed, fire came down, slew 400 people. You thought, a man like that? As soon as he got word, I'm sure old Elijah just kind of stood up and said, bring it on, hussy. Give me your best shot, Jesse. But you know what? That's not what happened. He ran and fled in fear from one woman. He just slew 400 prophets. He just prayed fire down from heaven. And now he's running in fear. And he runs to the desert. And he asks God to kill him. I'm glad he didn't answer his prayer. Look at it in 1 Kings 19. This is the final time he prays in the scriptures that we have recorded. God, this is good stuff. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4. He's hiding out in the desert, running away, running from one woman. But he himself, talking about Elijah, went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. That's it. Everybody look up here. I thank God that's one prayer God didn't answer. God had answered that prayer. He had never seen a chariot of fire. He had never seen the chariot of fire. He had missed out on one of the greatest events in all the Old Testament, a chariot of fire escorting him back to heaven. 
You better thank God he don't answer all of our prayers. Woo! That blesses me. Expect God sometime to refuse some of our prayers. It's good stuff, Bill Myers. I'm not on to you, so don't follow me out the car. Say, what did I do wrong? You had not do nothing wrong. I love you. Everybody look up here. Everybody look up here. Rebecca gets it. I'm to her all the time. Isn't it great, guys? God in his mercy <laughs> didn't answer Elijah's prayer. <laughs> and later on we read, he took a chariot of fire into heaven. One of two men who never died. And one of the men who met with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Because God didn't answer his prayer. Well, keep on praying, Team Jesus. We've learned from the greater, one of the greatest prayer warriors in all the Bible, Elijah. And I'm grateful God gave that message to me because I needed it more than anybody else. And I gave him the glory for that. Just remember when you pray tomorrow, stretch yourself out for the lost, please. Not one of these little, now lay me down to sleep, namby-pamby prayers that the devil loves you to pray and not for me to pray. Has no teeth in it, no bite in it, no power of God in it. We just like to hear ourselves talk. When we pray, expect the Lord to resurrect the dead spiritually. Expect the Lord to revive me. Expect the Lord to revive our church. To bring back alive that which was dead. There are a lot of churches in America that used to be alive, but now they're dead. Expect the Lord to require perseverance. Keep on praying. Remember those seven things. And expect the Lord in His mercy. He's not always going to answer all of our prayers. Because He's a good God. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. The first prayer God ever hears is, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. That puts you on praying ground when you give your heart and life to Jesus because it's only through the blood of Jesus you can get access to the Heavenly Father. If you've never been washed in the blood, you can't get your prayers to heaven. Don't tell me, well, he answered my prayers. No, he didn't. Maybe someone else is praying for the same thing. The Bible says God does not hear the prayer of a lost person. The Bible says He hears the prayer of a righteous person. You can't be right unless you're right with Jesus. And if you're here tonight or you're watching online and God's Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart, you're not sure if you made that commitment to Jesus in your heart. It's not a question, do you believe in Jesus? Because we all believe in Jesus or we wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be watching tonight at home if you didn't believe in Jesus. We all believe in Jesus. That's not the question. The question is, have we made a commitment to Jesus in our hearts? The Bible says in Romans 10 that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised from the dead, you can be saved. If you'd like to make sure that you know, that you know, that you know, your name's been written in that Lamb's Book of Life you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. But your sins have been forgiven. But you're going to spend eternity in heaven. As I pray this prayer out loud, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer in your heart right now. Jesus is here. He's wherever you're at watching this service tonight. If you'd like to make that commitment to Him, would you pray this prayer right now in your heart as I pray it out loud? Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Without you, I know I'm lost. But tonight, dear Jesus, 
ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Teach me how to pray. In Jesus' name. Head your bowed and eyes are closed. If you're at home, you prayed that prayer, you tell someone. That's one of the ways you know that prayer is real. You'll never be silent. You have to tell someone. That's one of the birthmarks of a believer. If you're here tonight at Cornerstone, you say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer from my heart. I made that commitment to Jesus, and I'm not ashamed. If you prayed that prayer, would you raise your hand? Anybody here? Look up here, church. Praise the Lord for Elijah. Stretch ourselves day every day. We've got to keep stretching ourselves. All those people we're praying for, you're praying for them. need Jesus. Keep stretching yourselves. We want to stretch ourselves with all those that we mentioned tonight. Some's got COVID. We need to stretch ourselves out for them. People that got cancer. Brother Roy Clark's got Alzheimer's. Morning Glover, I called him this week. He wasn't here Sunday because he's hurt his foot. He had to put a doctor's appointment yesterday. That's why he's not here tonight. Pray for Brother Warren. Keep those folks just stretch themselves out for one another. We all need it. Amen. Let's pray together, church. Let's get together.